Hello, my name is Mario. Welcome to another software architecture in Go video. In today's episode, we're going to be discussing about maintainability. So what is maintainability? Maintainability indicates how easy our system can be modified. This means adding new features, improving performance, or fixing defects. How can we measure maintainability? So there is this book that I like recommending called Building Evolutionary Architectures that includes a nice concept called fitness functions. And in practice, what fitness functions means is that there is a way that you can measure things in your system that you can compare back in the future when you add uh, or make a new change. For example, let's say that you are making a change in your system that for whatever reason reduces or makes latency higher than it used to be. So you can compare latency to the previous version and say, hey, the change I made is making things worse. For this specific video, what we're going to be using is three things. And those three things are going to be based on a thing called continuous integration. And continuous integration means is every time we push uh, a piece of code into a repository, a remote repository, either if you're using Git or, or SVN or Bitbucket or whatever the case may be, everything is going to be running some sort of process that consolidates all that data or does something with our, our code. For example, those things will be maybe using Jenkins CI or maybe using Circle CI or maybe my favorite GitLab CI. For our example, we're going to be using GitHub Actions. And those things that we're going to be running through continuous integration will be running tests, running code coverage, and running linters. Specifically, the tools that we're going to be using for those three actions will be for testing, will be your regular Go test, you know, your, your standard library testing package. For code coverage, we're going to be using a, a service called CodeCov. And for LinkedIn, we're going to be using probably the most popular one will be Colang CI. Again, the idea is that when we're trying to measure maintainability, we're going to be using continuous integration to run some sort of process that indicates how good or bad is the new version that we're adding to our server or our system, whatever the case may be. So let's jump into the code. And as usual, the link to all of this will be in the description, please check that out. So a few things that I added to our to-do microservice was adding support for GitHub Actions. I enable within those GitHub Actions to run the tests, enable the Golang CI linter, as well as sending the data to GoCov, which is our code coverage service. You don't have to use GoCov. There is a few different ways. There are a few different ways to literally just pull the data that you're getting from the Go test and literally ingesting those in your own GitLab or rather CI system and then display those back to your whatever system that you're using. Important thing about GitHub Actions is that the way it works, um, I was honestly really surprised I even tweet, tweeted about it, is that um, do you, you just have to define a workflow, which is a file, a YAML file, a few different instructions, and you just literally you just run it the way it is. Uh, the cool thing about this is that it will run into different different environments depending on what you're configuring. And for example, here right in this example, I'm using the linter and I'm running everything the way it is and everything seems to be okay. Now, the cool thing about this is that you can, again, you can use CircleCI or GitLab CI, whatever integration that you may have, and it will tell you in GitHub, um, it will indicate if it was red or green. Uh, with this icon right here. Now, this is complaining because CodeCov has a, a small, or rather, I went down or I decreased my code coverage, therefore it's complaining, and that's good because I want to know what changed between the different commits and, and, and whatnot. So if I look at the commits and I go ahead and I you notice that if I click here, it says, hey, my, my code coverage, which indicates, hey, how much of the code that I have in my project is being covered by the tests that are implemented at the moment. It says, hey, you went down from 51 
to 5 to 46. So I can say this is a fitness function. For example, it says, hey, you're going down, you're making things worse in the context of the things that we're measuring. Okay, so if we go and check uh, uh, the other uh, actions that we have will be, hey, the linter is passing, the tests are passing, but our code coverage is going down. So this will be an example of maintainability going down. One of the things that I did specifically for uh, this example that I have here, and I highly recommend you to go and look at the code, is that I added and I used Colang CI, and I specifically selected a few things that I think are the my recommendations when you're building a new project, and I highly encourage you to look at the documentation of Colang CI, so you can take a look at that. And I define a few things, for example, for tests, I don't really care about the cyclomatic complexity of if there is this exhaustive stroke um, linter, which uh, literally indicates uh, if you are using all the fields in strokes and whatnot, the length of a function, if you are using properly go errors, or maybe the length of the lines of the length of each line, or if we're wrapping error. So depending on the rules that you have in your project, you need to define those in your goal length or linter or whatever you're using. So this is a way to measure maintainability. Another cool thing, because I was telling you that we have code cough, there is this service, like I said, code cough, that literally displays all the information, sort of like a like an onion architecture sort of thing. And if you notice, um, the red indicates that I don't have enough code coverage for my package. And, and I want you to pay attention to this right here this section right here every time that I hover it will display the main package or the or the root package in that structure if I go all the way up it will be internal I have rest but if you notice I have the files and if I go depending on the, there is a package right here called mvar postgresql it rest again and so on and so forth so this is a cool uh, service that I found and I, I think it's useful and again you don't have to use this one but it's one of the cool things that I, that I discovered. It shows you what's the code coverage that you have. And depending on your changes, it will tell you, hey, you reduce or you increase the code coverage. The other important thing that I want to show you to you is this thing called Dependabot. And Dependabot is a, a service that is also included in GitHub that allows you to using Go or I, I believe it supports uh, Node and also Ruby and Java perhaps. It allows you to determine the dependencies that you have. And then from there, you can create a pull request that indicates you need to upgrade the version that you have. And actually, I have a few pull requests that were created by Dependabot. The whole point of enabling this um, tool is to let you know that, hey, we need to perhaps upgrade the package or the library that we have right now and make sure that uh, is stable or is secure enough and this is another way to measure maintainability because when we're making changes if we're not keeping track of our dependencies which are usually third-party dependencies we need we can get in a trouble if we don't update those often so this is another thing that i highly recommend you so with that being said let's jump into the conclusions and we'll give you my final points about what is important with dealing with maintainability situ or features in Go and other different projects. So this is how you can measure maintainability in Go. It doesn't necessarily mean only Go. I was showing you a few different tools that you can use for Go specifically. But if you are coming from a different programming language, the important part will be always defining a continuous integration uh, service that you can use for running your tests your code coverage tool and perhaps a way to lint the code that you have and after you do that you can measure the changes that you make or you push into reposit into your repository and determine if the metrics that you define perhaps code coverage or maybe latency or maybe whatever you have it goes down or it goes up depending on your metrics so this is a cool thing to indicate that you're making progress or you're not making progress or improving your system. I do like this one. And I, again, I highly recommend you the book I, that I was showing you a while ago, Building 
evolutionary architecture because it gives you a different way to to think about how you can you can build your system and define metrics that you can use for determining if you're making progress or not and again that this is for now that's it for for this episode and thank you for watching and as usual if you have any comments or any questions please let me know and i will talk to you next time okay take care and see you in the next episode bye bye